when I started working with Git branches, I had a heck of a time understanding anything. And a big part of that is every time I looked for an explanation, uh, they showed me these diagrams, um, directed acyclic graphs, is the name for these diagrams. And apparently under the hood, this is exactly what Git is doing. Um, unfortunately, that is not the way my brain works. And I really struggled with this for quite some time until I found that instead I could think about Git branches as stacks of building blocks. Now, stacks of building blocks, that's something concrete, something I can deal with. And it was this idea that each commit would be a new block. So every time I added a commit, I was adding another block. Uh, going along with this, it, the default Git log, I find not to be tremendously helpful. But you can really modify that output. And so what I use is git log dash dash one line. And when you do that, now it looks to me like that stack of blocks with each commit landing on top of the commit that came before it. And so now I'm finally getting to a place where these things make sense. I can sort of see what's going on and I can see these relationships between branches. For example here, right, we have our main branch with two commits on it, commit A, commit B, and then we create this feature branch, feature slash C, right? So feet is just short for feature. Um, so we've got the feature branch and it's got those same commits, A and B, because we branched off of main and then we added one new commit, C. And so rather than a, a diagram with bubbles, uh, I find it makes a lot more concrete sense to me when I can look at this and say, oh, I see, I've got these blocks. Hey, the feature C branch that stack of blocks has one extra commit on it, that commit C. So now when I say I'm going to merge feature C into main, well, what that means is I'm going to take that extra commit, anything that's on C that doesn't already exist in main, and I'm going to copy that over. So I end up taking that commit, making a duplicate of it, and then I take it over and I drop it on top of main. So when I get done with this merge, my main branch and my feature C branch look the same. They're identical. So how do we know if we can do a fast forward merge? So the key to doing a fast forward merge is that our receiving branch, right? In this case, main, all of the commits in our receiving branch need to appear in the branch that we're merging in, our merge branch, right? So you might say it's a, a subset, right? A and so we can take a look and we can say, okay, do, do all these commits appear within here? In this case, we've got commits A and B, and they both appear inside our feature branch. So yes, we'll be able to do a fast forward merge. Uh, actually, as a shortcut, we can just sort of look at the most recent commit and say, does that appear over there? And if we use the git log one line parameter and we take a look at that, you'll see here that uh, it's even notated where that main branch ends within our feature branch. So using this git log one line is a great way to do a quick check and say, hey, am I going to be able to do a fast forward merge? Now we can't do, we cannot do a fast forward merge if it doesn't fit within there. And so what happens sometimes is maybe while we're working on our feature branch, right? We're working on feature C, we're going through and doing that. But in the meantime, somebody else has completed feature D and merged it in. And that's when we end up with a, uh, a situation like this. You can see that on our branches, Right, main has this commit D that does not appear in our feature branch. And at this point we say our branches have diverged and we need to decide how we're going to fix that. There's two main ways to fix that. Uh, the one is we can rebase our feature branch uh, and the other one is we can create a merge commit. And we will take a look at both of those in other videos.